Hello, this is Mark from the Swamp School. I want to welcome you back to our discussion on soils. This week we're going to be going over hybrid soil layers, and whether the hybrid or not, I guess it doesn't really matter, but it's layers at any rate. As you can see on my chart here, I have got a list of hybrid soil layers, beginning with the O and ending with the R. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to switch over to zoom in on this and we'll go over the layers. Okay, we've zoomed into our horizons and as you can see we have an O, an A, an E, a B, a C, and an R and these are the layers of soil and the idea is that each one of these layers is distinct and essentially has a different thickness and certain features that go along with it. So let's jump into the O horizon. The O is the topmost horizon and again these layers may or may not be present in all profiles but this is a generalized profile. And the idea with the O is that O stands for organic and is the large amounts of organic matter that are basically decomposing. Now, it is distinct from the leaves, leaves on top. The idea is that you, if there should be really the top of soil is really the, the place where air more or less stops. So, so the idea is leaves, it's kind of fluffy, so you kind of you kick those away and then you have kind of this kind of matted area. That's the beginning of your O horizon. Then once you get into the O horizon, you'll have sub-horizons, and this is true for all of the different layers, the different horizons. And depending upon some of the nomenclature used, you can have O1, O2, OA, OI, OE. There's, there's all different ways of delineating these. And just as a simplified example, here's an O1 horizon. Essentially, you can the matter, basically, that's the, the organic matter, you can determine, well, that's a leaf. You know, maybe it's an, even an oak leaf. You can determine its origin uh, visually. Once you get a little bit deeper, the the areas the soil is basically decomposing more, and now you can just see there's black stuff, and that's about all that really helps you with that. So that's not a whole lot. Uh, so that's the horizon. And here's an example. This is a kind of very peaty soil, lots of organics in the upper part. And so that is so this top part here is your O horizon. Now the next horizon is the A horizon. <clears throat> the A and the O are both the surface horizons. And the A horizon is where most of the biological activity occurs. We have uh, sometimes uh, these these tend to be darker than the than the other layers because of all the organic matter. Or, again, the O horizon, if it's on top, is largely black decomposing material. And as you kind of leach that into the lower horizons, well, it's going to darken those soils up. So we're going to have certain soil indicators that are indicative of that. But basically, we're looking at the A horizon at that point. And here's an example of an A horizon. As you can see, Right here, we have all this organic matter coming from the leaf litter that's working its way in. There's not much of an O horizon here, very thin O horizon. And then we're basically into an A horizon here. So that's essentially the A horizon. And then below it, we get into the other layers. But if it relatively shallow, you know, a few inches thick, maybe. Um, essentially, between the O and the A, we affectionately call that topsoil. Now, there's an oddball horizon that may or may not be present. Um, e, the E horizon, it's E actually stands for eluviated. And you only see these in well-developed older soils uh, where basically it's been le left relatively undisturbed. And so we're looking at areas that are basically leached. And the idea is that it, it's showing a, a, a kind of a zone of leaching. And here's an example. So you have your A horizon here. Our next horizon really below it is our B horizon, but in between sandwich we have this E horizon. And basically what's happening is you're getting a leaching effect that's going through from the A to the B. And usually this is due to the plant material above, like a, like a pine forest will have a very high acidity and it will leach this out. So you leach the color out into lower horizons. We actually call this a spodic zone here where we basically have moved the color from here down to here into the B horizon. So that is the E horizon. But you don't, you don't always see the E. It's kind of exciting when you do, but it is one we are aware of. Now, this isn't a horizon. <clears throat> this is something we run into quite a bit, but it, it occurs in this A horizon into the B, and it's known as oxidized rhizospheres. And we're going to pay a lot of attention to this. We'll be talking about these when we get into soil indicators. But the idea basically is that these are root channels that are living and they're pumping oxygen into this gray soil here. And the result is, is it's essentially rusting because of the oxygen. So you're getting this very wet soil and you see all these roots in here and you're getting these root channels and we call those oxidized rhizospheres. Here's an example over here. We've got this root iron lined root channel. It's a plaque of iron on the root. And essentially it's there because 
of the oxygen coming out of the root into this wet soil. And then it's basically going from a reduced condition, which is gray, to an oxidized condition, which is orange. So it's a chemical reaction that's changing its color, but it's kind of important. So we find that in this zone. Now, the B horizon is the subsoil. Now, the B horizons may have some organic matter in it, uh, but primarily the big difference is the A horizon has a lot of organic matter with, with, with you know, kind of maybe a, it, it varies on percentages, but, you know, a mixture of organic and mineral. Let's just call it a mixture and give any numbers, um, but organic and mineral. And the organic matter basically kind of stops once it hits the B, and it really doesn't make its way past the B horizon. Uh, there may be fractures in the B horizon where you'll see kind of kind of tendrils of organic matter finding its way to lower depth, but it's it's actually just because of the the physical fracturing. It's not actually a layering. So we basically are primarily uh, clay or minerals, uh, highly weathered, meaning it's very fine material. Uh, it's not not a lot of rocks usually. And this is the subsoil. Uh, it has a very different structure than the A horizon. Generally, tends to be more dense. Uh, usually speaking. So here you can see an A horizon here. I don't know if you can get a sense on color, but it's 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 softer. And then we get to this B horizon, it gets much, much firmer. And so that's the B horizon. Then the C comes after the A and the B. The biggest thing with the C horizon is we're introducing the concept of rock. Uh, rock comes in uh, usually uh, unweathered, meaning it's coming from the bottom up, uh, what we call weak rock, meaning it's, it's, it, they're, they tend to be small. The issue with the sea horizon when you're dig, digging a hole like this is that you can remove the rocks by hand. You don't need the big yellow toys to move these rocks. You can pick these up by hand so they're at, at depth. But these are the unweathered rocks, so they're coming from the bottom and kind of working their way up a bit, uh, usually due to frost heaving and things like that. The other thing with the sea horizon is this is the zone where weathering is no longer really effective. And the idea behind this is that in the upper part here, the weather, the temperature, rainfall, and so forth affects the soil development. Once you get into the sea horizon, the weathering is no longer really effective, and you're essentially you're dealing with kind of a, a sterile environment, if you will. And this generally is, you know, about a five or six foot depth before we get there. This one's a little bit shallower here, but basically the idea is that we've got this rock, um, small pieces of rock, and essentially that is all that really. Uh, you need to find for the sea horizon. Now, you may find rocks in the upper part for other reasons, but but the idea is these rocks will be weathered. These rocks are unweathered, and that's really the difference. Of course, weathering and unweathering, that's a whole other topic. <laughs> but basically, as you can imagine, the weather is going to wear away the rock. These are going to be rounder, or smaller, and more <clears throat> eroded versus down here, which are basically chunks of basically parent material. Now, the R horizon... This is the bottommost layer that we're going to talk about. There's actually a CR horizon, but then an R horizon if sometimes. <clears throat> and the idea with this is these are um, weathered bedrock, uh, may or may not be weathered, uh, partially weathered, but basically they are continuous masses uh, or boulders of hard rock that can't be excavated by hand. So these are going to be too big uh, for hand removal. And the idea basically is you're dealing with the big yellow toys at that point. And here's, a, here's an example here. So we've got... A pretty nice profile going all the way down, probably about five or six feet, and then you hit this limestone rock formation down here, and that essentially is is it looks like poured concrete. But you can see the sea horizon in here with the the other you know unweathered rock and um, yeah the unweathered rock basically um, working its way up, and it does find its way up. What's kind of interesting about this particular one is you'll see a band of black here. This is what we call a buried horizon, which is essentially all this stuff came in. And buried it and this is near a river um, so basically this was an erosional feature over many many years and essentially this was the original a horizon if you will in the o horizon working its way down and then uh, some event occurred and it formed another layer so we actually have two layers here which is kind of cool it's a buried horizon but that is our horizon so we go <clears throat> start with o we go to a uh, sometimes e b c and r and that is our, our profiles as we describe our, our try to describe our soils. Okay, well, welcome back. I hope that was helpful. The layers are a little tricky sometimes and we want to get them, uh, them right. This is how soil scientists actually go through the hydric soil descriptions, kind of from the 87 manual way back when. But they are part of the regional supplements and we still need to understand where these layers are. Now the regional supplements don't specifically talk about layers in the traditional soil science sense, but they are part of the, the process, so we do need to understand them. So that wraps up this week's discussion on hydric soils. Next week, we'll be going over 
I found an exciting thing called soil texture. 